माई ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स असलम वालेकुम वरहमतुल्लि वरक शाल आई एल बी स्पीकिंग इन इंग्लिश आई नो देर विल बी सम प्रॉब्लम विद लॉट ऑफ पीपल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट बट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस मैसेज ऑफ प्रोटेक्टिंग आवर रिपब्लिक दिस मैसेज ऑफ सेविंग द रिपब्लिक इट इज़ नॉट ओनली मेंट टू द आर एस एस एंड फैसिस्ट ऑफ तमिलनाडु but this message to me should go to all the fascists in india and also sitting abroad that we will protect this republic we will save this republic today this program is happening in kanyakumari which is the most dead end point of mainland india but i can guarantee you one thing the program is happening in kanyakumari but there is shivering happening in nagpur and pmo office those people who are trying to weaken our country those people who are trying to weaken our democracy weaken our constitution weaken our republic they are afraid when they see specially when they see our sisters coming out from their houses and i can ensure when they see our sisters coming out from their houses many fascists are running inside their houses from the on behalf of the national committee of popular front again i would like to thank all the people sitting in front of me all the guests on the stage for coming to this program i'll tell you why because in today's india attending a popular front program is not a simple thing you have to be brave you have to be courageous to attend a popular front program a coward cannot attend popular front program because coming to a popular front program means accepting challenge coming to a popular front program means confronting fascism coming to a popular front program means giving a message to the fascists that we are not afraid of you will fight you will confront you so i would like to thank you for the courage that you have shown today today is a very auspicious day for us we are very happy that today our country become republic which means we got our constitution we are not ruled by any monarchy we are not ruled by any king we are ruled by the people today we became a republic we are very happy for that but there is one group in india which hates 26 january there is one group in india which hates 26 january and that group is the rss the sang parivar the fascists they hate 26 january why because when in 1947 our country gained independence there was another country created called as pakistan on the name of religion there were people sitting in india like savarkar hegdevar golwarkar who wanted to make india as a country based on another religion but our forefathers our real freedom fighters they ensured that our country does not become a country of single religion they ensured that our country will belong to everyone and that is the reason on 26 january a historic thing happened and that was our country got our constitution and we became a secular democratic republic why do the fascists hate the constitution because this fascists follow ideology called as hindutva ideology what is hindutva ideology hindutva ideology is nothing but a new avatar a new avatar of manuvad what is manuvad manuvad was a constitution of the manuvadis which believed that a small group of people will have all the powers a small group of people will be superior and everyone will be their slaves and everyone will be inferior anything can be done to them they can be made your slaves you can kill them if they hear anything you put hot oil in their ears if they say anything you put hot oil in their mouth you can do anything to them such type of ideology was the manuvadi ideology, ideology and they wanted to implement this manuvadi ideology in india but on 26 january their plans were demolished and india became a constitution because on one side manuvadi is saying 
that people are not equal on the other side our constitution is saying all indians are equal on one side the manuvad is saying that entire power should be in the hand of specific people on the other side the our constitution is saying everyone will have equal rights on one side the manuvad is saying that power should be based on caste on the other side our constitution is saying there will be no discrimination on the basis of caste religion creed or color so this is the reason this sangh parivar this is the reason the rss the fascists they hate 26 february and i am pretty sure our prime minister who is a long term pracharak of the rss today morning when he is he was asked to unfurl the, the national, national flag, flag to show the world he might have done a very big drama that i am enjoying it but you I, i'll guarantee you that he comes from the rss and 100% our prime minister was not happy today to praise the constitution because he follows the manuvad but still we have our constitution though we have our constitution we have an extra responsibility to protect our constitution today, today our constitution is under attack there is no doubt into that the central government in india they want to bring the bjp style the the communist party style china communist party style single party rule in india they want to make india like china and you must be shocked that a delegation of the bjp visited china a delegation of bjp visited china to study how in china a single party is ruling the country for the last 60 70 years because they want to do the same thing in india they want to bring india a single party rule no regional parties no opposition party a single party rule that is their plan and for that they are working the states in which bjp never wins like tamil nadu like kerala there are plans to increase the number of parliament seats in those states where bjp is winning so that the seats of south indian states become irrelevant that is another plan going on with the delimitation to increase the number of parliament seats for states where bjp is winning and decrease the number of seats in states where bjp is not winning recently we have seen the government is directly interfering in the state affairs directly they are addressing the bureaucrats what is india india is a union of states states are important we are a union of state and this government hates state government this government hates state government they were happy when there was a state government previously in tamil nadu which was their puppets there was a puppet government in tamil nadu previously and the government was happy because whatever the center government wanted the state government is to implement but now they have, they have got, got a government out. which doesn't listen to them and that is the reason you will see they are intervening in tamil nadu they are purposely intervening in kerala they are purposely intervening in west bengal they are purposely intervening in all those states where there is no bjp government they want to make the state government irrelevant and this is very very dangerous trend this is very very dangerous trend democracy will be demolished if the bjp government tries to control the states through bureaucrats like the ias and ips officers and completely disregard the elected representatives this government was formed on the basis of hate there are few words you remove this few word from a bjp leader's dictionary and the bjp leader will not cannot speak a single sentence words like pakistan word like hindu muslim word like ayodhya mathura you remove this word from their dictionary once you remove this word a bjp leader cannot speak a single line that is because their entire politics is based on hate and any party or any government that is formed on the basis of hate they can never ever do anything good to the society never ever a government which is based on hate which is formed on hatred can never do anything good for the society and we have seen that in india in the last 7 years what has happened in india the covid management of this government we have seen we have seen the covid manager of this government india has the maximum number of doctors in the world maximum numbers of the doctors in the world are in india even more than any other country even then even then 
we could not provide medical services to the people who are dying during covid why because a government which is formed on hatred cannot do good for anything and you cannot expect any good happening from this government bodies were floating on the river bodies were burning on the street Bar bodies were getting buried in the, the street, street because there was no place in shamshan or there was no place in kabrastan this is the situation this government has brought this people is say this government says we are trying to make india strong but you should know in last 5 years in last 5 years 60000 millionaires have left india 60000 millionaires have left india every year 5 to 6000 millionaires are leaving india they are living indian citizenship they don't want to be in india they are living india on the one side this government is claiming we are making india proud india passport has has got lot of value this is the value they have brought to the indian passport that people are leaving india and going 60000 people have left india and went and who are leaving india the millionaires are leaving india as per the latest report if you have seen which came in oxfam the one percent rich the one percent rich of india are having four times more property four times more wealth than the 70 percent of indians one percent of indians and who are those one percent indian this one percent includes the best friends of narendra modi adani ambani during the covid period we have seen during the lockdown lockdown what happened our business got into problems our income got into problem even a poor rickshaw driver could not earn 100 rupees a day even a shopkeeper could not earn 1000 rupees a day that was the situation that the indians normal indian face during the lockdown first lockdown and second lockdown and do you want to know what happened to the rich during the first lockdown and second lockdown during the first and second lockdown ambani adani adani earned 74 billion dollar the income of adani was 74 billion dollar that is total india's 10 rich people they earn 257 billion dollar out of 257 57 billion dollar 1/5 was only by adani 1/5 was adani 53% of the poor people's income has reduced in india you all are thinking where is our income where has our money gone your money is going to adani and ambani because the government is making laws for these two corporates and they are earning this is the india these people are saying we are working for india what type of work are they doing for india you should be knowing that india has become the most unsafe country for women a woman is not safe in india and leave alone muslim woman the report says indian woman that is if 100 women are unsafe in india that is 80 hindu women are unsafe in india that is the situation this government has created the highest number of rapes the higher number of domestic violence the highest number of attacks on women are happening in india this is the country bjp has done i would like to ask a question to the bjp to the rss to the prime minister everyone knows you are anti muslim everyone knows you are anti muslim but tell us one thing that you have done for the hindus tell us one thing you have done for the hindus what have you done for the hindus the dead bodies that were flowing in the river they were not muslim dead bodies they were not dead muslim dead bodies the dead bodies during covid that were burning on the streets they were not muslim dead bodies the girls who are being raped every day across india very very few will be muslims they are not not everyone is muslim in that what have you done for hindus they are saying muslims are the problem the government believes that muslim is the problem the rss believe muslims are the problem there are lot of places in india where there is not even a single muslim there is not even a single christian there is not even a single buddhist there are many places in india where there is not even a single minority are those places like tokyo and singapore are those cities become like america and london okay don't do anything for muslims don't give anything for us what have you done for the hindus still 
so this is the hypocrisy of the, the government, government that we'll have to expose on the other hand to hide its failure to hide the failure of the government we see this government has started a very strong anti minority hate earlier it was only the muslims who are being targeted now in the last 6 7 months we are seeing that the christian churches are being attacked nuns are attacked pastors are attacked fathers are attacked this hate will only increase if someone thinks that the hate will only stop with muslims they are the biggest fool today is muslim tomorrow it will be christians then it will be sc then it will be st then it will be obc the hate of the hindutvavadi will never stop they will target each and every single community one by one and that is what we are seeing in india but their prime target in india has always been the muslims always been the muslims why because this community this muslim community we are the most backward community in education we are the most backward community when it comes to economy we are the most backward community when it comes to ips ias government service we are backward in many thing but when it comes to protecting the country this community is always in the forefront there is a very famous share by allama iqbal batil se dabne wale hai aasmaan nahi hum batil se dabne wale hai aasmaan nahi hum sau bar le chuka hai tu imtihan hamara the meaning of this is this brilliant poetry by allama iqbal that this community this community maybe they may be very weak they may have lot of weaknesses but one thing about this community is we will never bend before our oppressor we will never bend before our oppressor and thousand times thousand times the world has tried it thousand times the world has tried it if you want to try it 1001 time try it we will never bow down so that is the tendency and that is the reason muslims are the prime target they are using they are attacking the muslims and the minorities in three three ways number one using the government government policies by bringing policies like ca nrc all these policies are using the government policies uniform civil code triple talaq these policies they'll use through the government machinery second way of attacking the muslims will be using the government agencies like the cbi nia the ats this type of mechanism and number 3 way of attacking the minorities targeting the minorities will be creating communal rights and now creating a genocide this is the three way they in which how they target a community through government laws through government agencies and through physical attacks the first two things were happening since a long time even during the congress time we saw how innocent muslim youths were put behind the jail and it happened even during the congress time it is happening here in tamil nadu even during the dmk time so many muslim youths are behind the bar so many muslims are behind the jail for 20 years 25 years but still the dmk government is not ready to release all the muslims it is happening everywhere not just bjp all even the secular governments are trying to put muslims behind the bar so the first two things using the law using the policy and using the agencies has happening for a long time but a new thing has started now in india a new thing has started in india that is a open call for genocide open call for genocide what is this open call for genocide we recently saw hari adharam sansad in haridwar it was not a dharam sansad it was a adharam sansad it was a adharam sansad that happened in haridwar and in that they were calling openly calling for killing of muslims but none of those hate mongers have been booked using uapa or nsa when the superintendent of police of haridwar was asked why uapa or nsa was not invoked on those people the same superintendent of police is saying that there is no violence happened here there is no violence as there is no violence that is the reason we cannot put uapa but the same police the same police will put uapa on dr kafil the same police will put uapa on siddiq kapan the same police will put uapa on rauf the same police will put uapa on anshad and firoz the same police will put Uh, UAP on Gulfisha. The same police will put different Muslim activists and students behind the bar without any, without any violence. So when it comes to Muslims, the laws are different. When it comes to the Hindu Tawadi, the laws are different. These two type of double standards we are seeing in our country. 
Next we see, this genocide is not just limited to Harigravar Sansat. Now they are trying to do the message across India, even in Tamil Nadu. Even in Tamil Nadu we are seeing the RSS groups are talking about a genocide. They are talking about how to finish Muslims. What is a genocide? If you want to know what is a genocide, you should read the history of Bosnia. You should read the history of Rwanda. You should read the history of Cambodia. What type of genocide happens? Lacks and lacks of people were killed. Similarly, how what the RSS is doing here in India. This is a very dangerous situation. And it is not just the duty of Muslims to avoid a genocide. I want to say one thing. To all those people who are planning for a genocide, just remember, <clears throat> as our chairman said a few days back, <clears throat> this is 2022, this is not 1992. This is 2022. If the RSS or Sangh Parivar plans for a genocide of the minorities in India, remember one thing, we will not welcome you in red carpet. We will not welcome you in red carpet. We will resist. We will resist. We will defend. Don't think that this is the 1992 India, this is the India of 2022. Here, the Indian Muslims have a voice and the Indian Muslims know how to deal with the fascists. Now, to target the Muslims, the BJP has to target one of the most dynamic voice among the Muslims. If you want to target a community, you have to target the most dynamic power inside that community. People are asking us, what is Popular Front doing in India? People keep asking, asking us, what Popular Front does in India? Actually, even we don't have an answer what Popular Front is doing in India. But actually, it is the RSS and the Sang Parivar, they can give a proper answer what RSS is doing in India. They will answer it. Because they know what Popular Front is doing in India. Popular Front of India was an organization some years ago. Some years ago we were an organization. Now we are not an organization. Popular Front is not an organization now. Popular Front is an attitude. Popular Front is a mindset. Some 10 years ago we were an organization. Now we are a mindset. What is a mindset? If you are ready to confront the fascist forces, if you are ready to confront the oppressors, you are Popular Front. That's it. You don't have to be a member of Popular Front. You just need to have the attitude of Popular Front. You just need to have the mindset of Popular Front. And this attitude and this mindset is the biggest problem the RSS is facing in India. Because whenever, every day, the RSS tries to implement its fascist agenda in the country, they will find a Popular Front cadre in front of them. They will find a Popular Front leaders in front of them. They will find people with Popular Front attitude, with Popular Front mindset in front of them. And this is, and this is the mindset that we are propagating and this is the mindset because of which we are being targeted. I would like to say one thing. Today, the, all the government agencies are behind us. The ED is behind us. The NIA is behind us. The CBI is behind us. The income tax department is behind us. All the, the government, government agencies are behind us. The government is spending lot of taxpayers' money on Popular Front. Lot of people are having jobs because of Popular Front. Without Popular Front, sometimes we think what work so many government agencies will have. Because of Popular Front, lot of people are having work. People ask us, people ask us, when all the government agencies are behind you, when the media is behind you, when the RSS is behind you, in such a difficult situation, why are you conducting such a program? Why are you conducting such a program of saving the Republic? You should be silent. You should be silent. You should don't take any risk. And I have said this many times and I am saying this again. Popular Front believes in one 
principle of Shahid Tipu Sultan. We believe in one principle of Shahid Tipu Sultan. What is that principle? Gidad ki sao sala zindagi se better share ka ek din hai. That is the policy of Tipu Sultan. And what does it mean? It means instead of living 1000 years of a life of jackal, it is important to live one day like a lion. So if the fascist forces are thinking that they will create fear within Popular Front by using their agencies, by using their media agents, I would like to say you have chosen the wrong team to frighten. We are not the people who can be frightened. You should try this on someone else, not on Popular Front of India. Finally, I would like to say we have a, we as a community has a very important role to play. A very important role to play and a historic role to play. I remember when I was young, I remember when I was young, whenever an aged person used to come to our house, we used to ask him, are you from the British period? Whenever an aged person used to come to our house, we used to ask him, are you from the British period? And that aged person used to say, yes, I was there when the British were in India. The second question we used to ask him is, did the British put you in jail? Did the police send you to Kalapani? Did the police put you in, put any cases on you? Did you have any problem from the British? And that people used to tell us, no, I did not have any problem from the British. And we as small kids, we used to say, there was such a big oppressors like British in India, even during that time, you did not face any problem. That means you have not done anything against the British. Similarly, remember, after 50 years, after 50 years, when we will become old, after 50 years, when we will become old, small children will ask us, there was a time in India, there was a time in India, when there was a fascist regime ruling the country, when all the laws were misused to target dissent, when innocent people were put behind the bar, the entire minorities like the Muslim, Christians, Buddhists, SCSTs were targeted just because of their religious faith and their caste. There was a time when all the democratic rights were being taken off. Were you there during that time? We will say yes, we were there during that time. The next question the child will ask you, how many UAPA cases are on you? How many NSA cases are on you? How many times you went to jail? How many times there were cases on you? And we will say, nothing happened to me. That small kid will tell. So that means you have not done anything for India. You have not done anything for India. So remember, today the cases that will be on you. Today, if there is a UAPA on you. Today, if there is a NSA on you. Today, if you are put in the jail for confronting fascism, this is not a bad thing. This is a certificate for future. This is a certificate for future. Inshallah, after 50 years, after 50 years in India, there will be a group of people who will be the most respected people. And those will be the people who confronted the RSS and went into jail and took all the cases on them. So we have to prepare for that. Finally, entire world is saying that there will be a genocide in India. Entire world is saying that there will be a genocide in India. The world is afraid that India will become like Bosnia. The world is afraid that, that India will become like Rwanda. The world is afraid that India will become like Cambodia. Because the world has seen an oppressor conducting a genocide and killing millions. But inshallah, Indian Muslims, the Indian people, in forefront led by the Indian Muslims and the Indian minorities, we will give a message to the history of the world that once upon a time, the fascists tried to conduct a genocide and how the people of India defeated their genocide. This will be the new history we will teach. With this word, again I would like to thank everyone for coming here and our struggle has only begun. This is a very big struggle and on behalf of Popular Front, I will ensure you that Popular Front will always be with you in this fight. Together we can defeat this evil designs of the fascism. Shukriya.